Okay, in the next few videos, I'm going to introduce to you object-oriented programming. This is what's known as a programming paradigm. Now, there are many different paradigms, and they are effectively styles of coding. So most of what we've done so far would be classified as imperative programming. And we're going to move into this new style. Now, you have actually been using this throughout all of the Python that you've done so far, because it's actually built into Python but you've just probably not realized it. So the best way to show you this is if I make a variable name equals Dan, and you've seen me do in the past where we print out the type. So when we print out the type of name, you should hopefully know by now that this will print out a string. Now the difference is we've ignored it in previous videos, but you can see here it says there's a class of str. So a class is basically like a factory, okay? And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to build these factories, and from our class factories, we make objects. So this is made an object of a string. So underneath, I could have um, home equals yes, I don't know what this is, but we've got another string assigned to another variable. If I print out the type of home and run it, you can see this is also a class of a string. Now, both of these have used the same class to create them, but they're both in themselves referred to as objects. So we've got the object string here called Dan and the object string here called Yes. Now, we sometimes refer to these as instances because this is one instance of an object, this is another instance of an object. And we've got loads of things we can do with these. Now, we can do things, and you've done these in the past, so you've done things like uh, dot upper. So we could do name equals name dot upper, where you write the variable, or in our case, the object, then a dot, then we do something with parentheses, where sometimes we have to pass things, sometimes we don't. These look to us like when you use a function, and you will understand why in a minute, because when I break down the curtain of how object-oriented works, you'll actually understand how a lot of Python was built. So what we've got here, if I print out name, you can see it prints out the capitalized version of Dan, because Dan had what was called a method. So we've got methods built into our string object that are things we can do to our strings. Now, you might think this has been quite a complicated video so far, but I'm trying to explain that you've been using object-oriented programming all the way through Python, you just didn't realize it. So now I'm gonna show you how to use Python to build classes, build objects, and build methods, so you can actually understand how a lot of this was done. So to start with, let's keep it really simple. We're gonna make a class. So you write class, and we'll go for um, we'll just make a dog. So we'll make a dog class. It's always easy to start with an animal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start by making a method. So we're going to say def bark. So notice this is just like when you are making a function. So when you make a function inside of a class, it's referred to as a method. But I'm going to do a whole video on methods later. And for now, ignore this parameter self, you need to put it in every method that we add, but we'll come back to its full explanation later. Um, then we can just do uh, print um, bark. So the dog barks, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna then make two dogs. So a class is in essence a factory. So think of it like a factory and from our factory, we can make objects. So I'm gonna make um, dog one. So we'll do Toby equals, I'll do lowercase, it's better practice. So Toby equals dog. And I'm gonna do Bino equals dog. Again, keep it lowercase. So what we've done there is we've created two dogs. Now at the moment with our class being as it is, there's not a lot of differences between our dogs. All they can do at the minute is bark, but we've created 
objects or instances of this class for Toby. So I've got one in Toby and one in Beano, and they are separate. So while they've used effectively like the same set of instructions to build themselves, I can now do different things with each one, or at least we will be able to later when we go further into building our classes. But what I can do to use these, just like we've done with dot upper, I can now do things like Toby dot bark. And when I run it, it's outputting because that's what I've told it to do in the print. So this is calling that method for Toby. I could do the same thing for Beano, but like I say, at the moment, this won't look any different until we go into further videos. But these are called methods. So I've got Toby to bark and I've got Beano to bark. But they are these two act independently. So Beano and Toby have used the same set of instructions to build themselves, but they are separate dogs. Okay, so a class, think of it like a factory. The factory produces objects, and we often also refer to these objects as instances of these classes. All right, so that's hopefully a very brief introduction to classes and objects. I'm going to go into much more depth over the next few videos, and genuinely, it means your understanding will get much, much better if you found this video a little bit confusing. It does get easier the further you go.